hose. That's a hose. Where do you get male, that? Male. Uh huh. Female. Female. <laughs> I'm surprised they still allow us to say that in 2023 about they hoses. Don't know. About hose. <laughs> never been clearer. What's up, Life Right Nation? Hey, what's going on, guys? So we have something a little bit different and kind of new to us also you, for you today. Yeah, we, we haven't ever messed with this before. We've heard about it, and it's not something that you probably want to do in your Jeep. Absolutely don't want to do this modification if you drive any of your vehicles on road. But the buggy, the side chick, is not a vehicle I drive on road. It's a vehicle that I drive on really stupid obstacles. Yes. And this is something we've been told we needed to do for a long time, so we're finally going to do it today with the help of a friend. And we're doing it in preparation for an event that's coming H. up. H. Preparation H. <laughs> so we're headed out to Grand Junction shortly because they're actually opening a new buggy trail. So we're doing like a three or four day wheeling trip, but then the last day they are opening a new buggy trail with BLM. They've extended this yeah. canyon. And it's supposed to be pretty sick. Obviously, we're going to take the side chick, go check it out, go have some fun with some friends. But before we do that, we're going to do this. You guys know Woody? <laughs> I like bright peoples. It's Woody again. He's working on his buggy because he went and did some crazy stuff the other day. And he was like, hey, come on by because we need to do something to your buggy that's long, long overdue. So to show you, we've never actually even done this. Looks like we're right about 82, 83 wide, which is pretty narrow. How wide is how wide is your buggy? 84, 85, depending on which tires I'm running. Oh, that's it? She does fit just between. And if she was 84, 85, she'd definitely have to drive over a fender. Yeah. So we have to do drive overs. So 82, 83 wide. And she's, oh, she's 113 and a half. That's a really good wheelbase. That's a good wheelbase. Oh, belly. Oh, well, that we can't do anything because I can't go any lower. We've met well, to go lower. Where we're at, though. So, belly wise, you want to be Wait. around 20 inches. Don't mind me. I can go lower in the back, but I can't go lower in the front. It's good rails, 21 and a half ish. That's not too bad. I think it's a, I think it's higher in the front than it is the rear. Twenty-one and three quarter ish. Okay, okay, so we're so we're, we're close enough. Yeah, we've actually never measured any of that before. It's useful to have. Everyone always asks, and I'm like, huh. So we did have it higher. What he was like, you need to lower. It doesn't need to be that high. It's a buggy. You, you want it. You want it low. So I dropped them all the way. I dropped the fronts as far as I could, and that's as low as we could get. Um, so we need different spring rates. But if you see here at full lock now, since we changed her steering setup, she actually rubs the springs on the tire. Yeah. So Early. we probably need, you know, one inch wheel spacers on each side would be perfect. They put inches. you two inches wide. Until you get some place where you're too wide. <laughs> <laughs> so it's interesting. You can only lower coilovers so much. So if you notice, you've got, we'll round this to five and a half probably of bump by the, and probably six by the time you compress mm -hmm. that little bump doohickey at the bottom. I run mine at three to four inches of bump on an air shock. I mean, you can get away with lower ride height on an air shock than you can on a coilover because a coilover, you can only do so much with the coils before they just simply don't work at all. Right. Or like they, she, or they free float too much and you already she have even has the tender. In the there. tender up top, which right. is what keeps it from rattling when it gets fully extended. It does, it comes but free. You're limited with a coilover on how much yeah. shaft you can but she can go, side. But she can go yeah. faster, more comfortably. That's what she said. Yes. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> fancy. Super fancy. Note to self, read directions. <laughs> read the constructions. Getting started, open the box. Okay, we did that. Turn the scales on first. Okay, so we're gonna weigh her buggy with her in it. With that's me in it or with me out it of it? You out of it, it doesn't matter. No. Okay. At the end of the day, you, you scale the buggy with nobody in it unless you're a comp car. Okay. Comp okay. guys are looking at every single ounce in every single position. Brittany likes ounces and positions. Scales are numbered, lettered. Oh uh, yeah, right front. RF, right front. But and we haven't said why we're weighing it yet. Left front, we haven't. We haven't said why we're weighing we'll it yet. We'll say that we after gonna... we weigh it. Zeroed out. All right, so we're all zeroed out. So we're gonna see how fat she is. Whoa. What's the guess for the million dollar question? 4,300, I don't know. I have no idea. What's the guess for the magic question? 3,900. You guys split the difference, 4,010. Dang! <laughs> I was closer. I was closer. 4,010, nice. So does it tell you the percentage of weight, weight distribution? Well, you can go, you can math it. Basically 1,100 on each front and a little over nine on each rear. And then I think so if that's I click pretty, this button. I think it usually tells you, doesn't it? 27. 27 plus 27 is 54. So we're 54 front. Isn't it supposed to be 60-40? Ideally, yeah. you're 60-40. Oh, so yeah. I'm actually not 
That's not bad. I mean, that's far off. Yeah, that's really, it's really good. So the, the goal today, since we haven't said, is we are going to fill her front tires with water. Well, not fill them, but put water in the front tires. But we're going to fill them as far as it needs to go till we get to 60, 40 weight distribution because the front tires with water in them will help keep the front end down and apply traction when she's doing the big climbs and cresting over stuff. When I'm climbing crazy vertical yeah. things. 10% of 4,000 is... 400? She got it right 400, 400. pounds? So you gotta add 200 pounds to each tire. 200 divided by 8. 0.34. Like 8, 16, 24, 30. I feel like Woody's gonna get the answer first. Yeah. Probably not. There's no way you can put that much water. You can put, how, how much water can you fit into a 42? It's 275 pounds and that's just the top of the wheel. 275 pounds. She so needs 200 pounds per. I mean, that's to get close. To get warm. close is 200 pounds. You need two of me, you need one of me on each tire. <laughs> I'm exactly 200 just pounds. Strap you just strap the, me to the, to the tire. tire. <laughs> I leave a keyhole up and I put my valve stem to right there and that's 275 pounds on my 42s. So that one's perfect right there. We'll yeah. just do that one right th like that. So this one just get it yeah, a little bit rolled back, but yeah, basically horizontal and just pull the core out, put the adapter on, go flat, start filling, it starts sounding like there's water flowing through. You just, with a jack stand, you pull the hose off and let the water self settle. Oh, because it'll go a little bit past it and then just it'll let go it. a little bit past it, you just let it empty itself out until it hangs and done and done. So we'll start halfway with we'll water. Start half and see where we're at. And I think it's probably a good idea. You're running 35 spline or 40 spline? We have no idea. What's I have in no there. idea. We've so... never been in there. <laughs> We've never been in there. That's a good question to have because if you have too few splines, you will start breaking stuff. I know people who are concerned about 35 splines. And when they put water in, they generally want 35s for sure, ideally 40, but that changes a lot of other expensive things like lockers. Yeah, you can't yeah, you just gotta, swap them out. Yeah, yeah. You gotta change everything else. Yeah, no, swap gears out, so. no clue. I guess we could pull the hubs, but then the outer shaft could be different than the inners, right? Yep. Yeah, so I have no idea. Odds are, if the outer is 35 and the inner is 35, odds are. It's, yeah, it's a 60. Yeah. It's a 60 front, 70 rear. Yeah, so odds are it's 35. So you're saying don't go too much weight then? I would go hub height, so halfway. Okay. okay. And leave it and see wheel it a couple of times and see what it feels like. Yeah, okay. that's simple enough. And remind yourself that you've got water in the tires and it's gonna it's gonna grab a little more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no binding up. Lots and lots of front digs. You have a front locker or is it? Like yeah. Yeah, I have a front locker. Air front, front rear. Air B. Air B. Oh, Air so locker. So you can unlock it then. Yeah. That's often helpful. I did that a lot in the Toyota because Toyota stuff's not that strong. So first things first, we are taking all of the air out of the front tires. Yeah, and as you can see, we're gonna do it hub height. So right here, we're just gonna set both of them. Well, we'll do one at a time. And then uh, you just fill it up with hose water, at least for the summer. We live where it gets really cold. It does freeze where we live, so we'll... You're supposed to do beet juice or something that doesn't freeze. Uh, but... A lot of people make or... a lot of options. Annie freezes, some sort of type of tractor or something, or I guess tractors use beet juice. I don't know. We, the last know. time we mentioned this, we'll figure... a lot of people came up with other alternatives, yeah, which I'm so, sure Woody knows about. So for now, we're going to fill it up. Later, we can put the valve stem on the bottom, kind of let it all spray out, and then fill it up with other stuff. We'll just have to get the connector that Woody has for it and then figure out how to shove fluid in it. Really? Tractor supply, $10. Oh, there you go. If you want to know where to get the valve stem fillers. Oh, because you were saying tractors use. Oh. That's it. Yeah, it goes on to the valve stem and then goes on the hose. It's simple. Just that easy. It's super simple. <laughs> so do you need to get a pressurized something if you're going to use some kind of antifreeze or beet juice? Like you have to somehow adapt all that. So what guys will do is they will get a bucket of whatever and they'll get a 12 volt pump. Oh. Like an RV pump. Yeah. Oh. And they'll oh, you just, just okay. stick a yeah, we have one of those. in there or whatever. There's, there's a dozen different ways to do it, but they'll just use a 12 volt pump and pump it in. That's zero PSI. Let's see. Well, okay. So it does go down more at zero. Yeah. I only have four PSI in them, which that's at four PSI, which is crazy. Unless the maybe the gauge just doesn't work right. This seems easy enough. Not rocket science? Yeah, yeah. Not rocket science. Well, he's like, yeah. you really didn't have to come over here for this. <laughs> <laughs> this is a hose. That's a hose. Where do you get that? Male. Uh huh. Female. <laughs> I'm surprised they still allow us to say that in 2023 about they hoses. No, no. About <laughs> hose. <laughs> did you ask that hose? What it, we'll probably have to cut that part out. <laughs> did, you, did you ask did that you hose ask what it identifies as? What its pronouns were? <laughs> Uh, she's leaking. She's a. Can't oh, say what I was going to say. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Right, we've got hose. I think Heather knows me better than anybody else. Yeah, apparently, your closet dirty mind. <laughs> oh boy, you better be careful, Britt. You don't even. You know what you need to do is you need to order new hubs and you need to order at least outers. What would you probably break? An outer? You need U joints and probably an outer? Or do you break, break the inner two? I would do a drive flange and not hubs. Oh. You don't need hubs. What do you want? Especially with an airline. So get rid of the hubs, do dry flanges, just get 
outer stubs and U joints, maybe. Realistically, if you were smart, you'd pull it apart and see what you have. <sighs> I know. Uh, I know, I know. There's no fun to be had in there. Yeah. <laughs> no fun in Whoville with that one. I would say we should do it over the winter, but the winter is the best wheeling here because it's so nice out. Right. So nice. So it sucks. So you want to do it over the summer, but if only we had a mechanic, a mechanic that could do all of that for us, so that we didn't have Maybe to. Maybe you could schedule yourself. I mean, I could. I make an appointment. Make an appointment with, with yeah. our mechanic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we kind of need to. He, yeah, this is gonna be crazy. I can, I can feel the traction already. Like, I can see the traction entering the tire. You want to go wheeling after this, since we're already loaded up, and go feel it? We can just go do nasty half. What, nasty half? What's the one right out of the nasty gate? Nasty half. Probably. Yeah, we just go. You're going to feed me first. OK. Then we can go do something else. OK. So what we're going to do is we're going to let the air out of it one more time, since the, uh, the Nittos have a stiffer sidewall, just because the hose only fill with so much pressure. So at some point, it starts to pipe the PSI of the tire. So we're gonna let the air out again, hook it back up and let it start to fill again. So as an example, so, so Woody this, has- So a normal okay. tire like mine on my 42s are full of 275 pounds of water, exactly. Plus the tire and wheel makes it 425 combined. This one is 450, but it's water and lead shot. That's what's going on. Oh, I was like- The lead shot can you roll it doesn't now? move. No, no I can, I mean, but, but watch. <laughs> it's like that's math. the that's the lead keeping it there and then the water going forward and then bringing the so try, bringing try it back. Try to roll it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my. It doesn't want to roll. Well, you know where you're going to break? You're going to break trying to go through sand when you get stuck and you wheel hop is go gunk, gunk, bam. That's what's going to happen. But I also don't, I'm not putting lead shot in don't mine. It's just no. water, which makes a difference. Water's it's, easy to roll. Yeah. It's water still going to be heavy. Still heavy yes. Right. What I'm saying is she can't wheel hop in the sand. She'll, it'll, and it'll end up. Well, ideally, it, you know, yeah. yours is new and yeah. has portals and <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Does it work better? It does. It keeps the weight down low and... <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> like you'd think when you roll a tire... You it, you're picking it up. That's <laughs> Look, you think, you think when, you, that up. when you roll a tire... Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's insane. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> You keep thinking it's going to start rolling because it's a damn tire, but it doesn't actually do anything. <laughs> it's like those bob, like the, the thing weevil. with the sand. Yeah. yeah the weevil. <laughs> the weevil. You know what this means? I really need to get my secondaries. Yeah. There's a lot more weight to. Yeah, you need more power. Keep on keeping on. This is the most exciting thing we've ever done. It's like, walking, it's like watching paint dry. <laughs> watching paint dry. I don't know if you can tell, but clearly you can no longer hear it filling, which means it's that and you turn the water off, but you couldn't, you couldn't hear it. You couldn't hear it anymore. Don't stand there. Set your... Oh. oh, wow, this is pretty close. So we just got to decide where vertical is. The water stops. So when I did this on mine at Trail Hero, and then I weighed it later, four pounds, no, seven pounds different between that tire and that tire. Oh. I'm doing it with this method. So half a gallon? Not much. Yeah, not, not enough to care. Half yeah. a gallon? <laughs> not enough to worry. Hmm. So we could, eyeball it. Well, we couldn't... Oh. We could straight edge it across the top of the, the hub. I just looked vertically from straight down that line. As long as that's straight up and down from here to here, that looks straight. Yeah. Which one? The, the You're talking about the, the, the spoke? From that line down to that line, is that straight oh. right there? You want that vertic straight vertical? If that's, that's straight vertical, that's straight horizontal. Oh, that's true. That is true. I would say that's, that is vertical. Oh, sh <laughs> <laughs> You're standing right in the stream, Brit. <laughs> okay, what now? I warn you when you check your tire pressure, have your valve stem above the water oh, line. Yeah, up. Yes, oh, yeah. You might have a waterproof, waterproof whatever for air. Yeah. Which most of them are not. Yeah. So we still only, am I still only going to run four PSI or should we you run more now? You won't change your pressure. Whatever you've been running, I just leave it. Stick with whatever pressure. Is that one waterproof? Or did you just rotate it? Above the water line. Yeah. Barely. Good to me. All right. So we've already done everything on this side as far as letting it air down, filling it with water, air down, filling it with water a second time. Now we just got to put air back in it. Yep. And, and you know, you got to fix the brake. Should be done. And then we'll reweigh it, I guess. Yeah, Are we going to reweigh it? You have a brake problem now. Yeah, reweigh it. You have a brake. 
Got a brake hanging up. Oh it? yeah. Do you want to explain what's going on there? Kevin? Oh, I don't know. You have a brake hanging up. That's what's going on. And brakes hanging up. Unfortunately, <sighs> this tire does not want to spin. It looks fine at four pounds. Yeah. It'll be a little squattier because of the water. Yeah. yeah. Let a little air out. Get us over to four. I have no idea what it's supposed to be at, but that just seems what it that's likes just what to we've work been at. at. Although you might be able to go higher with yeah. that much traction. I'll try it as is and see what it does. And try not to break anything in the process. We were 4,010 before. I'm going to say we're 4410. We're just going to say 400 pounds. 4380. 4373. Oh, oh, damn. Close. I mean, I was close too. You both went over. Nobody wins a prize. Uh, oh, yeah, no, <laughs> it's true. Damn it. I didn't know the price of right rules. 4375. All right. So about 360 or 65 pounds. Or so. pounds of tire ish. Yeah, okay. that's fine. So what's it, what, is it, what is it front to back now, though? Well, now it's 28 and a half times two. Uh, so we're almost, or yeah. So you're close. We're close. We're close. What is it? So, 50. Yeah, you're close enough to call it pretty, pretty darn good. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty without, going, without doing too much up there. Hopefully you don't break stuff. You're basically 58, 42. Good job. That was a hard day's work. Yeah. Victory. That's a good number to be at. It's a good starting number. Yeah. Without good. getting too much water. Yeah, drive it, go test it, see what, yeah. it, what it feels like. Get it on some stupid vertical stuff. Go. Well, let's go fix this brake. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, we or Chris? Chris can't. He's working on Bex LJ. Yeah, we don't have a we gotta fix for a while. Okay, reverse. Okay. That's what it is. Um, no, we're just gonna. I'm gonna try to bleed the brake first. And just see. And see if that helps. If not. Then we'll Whoa. Yeah, sorry. Now my foot is all the way on the brake. Like it started all the way on the brake. That's just, uh -huh. it is what it is. Uh huh. Trying to brake stuff. I have it all the way down. If I let off the brake, it just jumps. Well, maybe you could talk to somebody about trying to figure out how to make the brakes work in this thing. Yeah, the brakes. That would be awesome. They're pretty terrible. Load it back up. She's on the trailer, watering the tires. Not quite 60 40, but pretty dang close. I know Kevin mentioned going to Sand Hollow and testing her out and doing some wheeling. Unfortunately, today we cannot because we have a concrete pour guy contractor coming out to our house that we have to be there for. Can I get a hot tub? So we got stuff going on at the house. Unfortunately, <laughs> we got to get back home now. But we will do our best to, because we've still got like a week week and a half before we have the trail ride in Grand Junction, Grand in Colorado. Junction. Yeah. So we've got time between now and then to hopefully take her out, test her out, and see how she feels. Oh, we could take her out on uh, Thursday with our guests. Oh, yeah. And oh, you yeah. could give them a ride maybe in the buggy up Nasty Half or oh, something. Oh, yeah. We've got friends coming over. That'll be in another video, though, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Remember, you can find all your Lightbright Nation merch and decals at lightbrightstudios.com. Yes, ma'am? Ma'am? Mm-hmm. Excuse you. Oh, I hope you guys yeah. learned something today, because I did. Yeah, it was honestly, Woody is a wealth of knowledge. Yeah. He always has been. And he's he, a great friend. I love that guy. He's such a great friend. He's such a cool dude. He's an incredible spotter. And like I said, he's just a wealth of knowledge. So definitely glad we have him locally in our Thank area. You, Thank we you, Woody. We love you. Thank you, Woody. You're amazing. Guys, as always, uh, we love you. And we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> oh, I can, I can imagine. We're fixing my brake. Might as well don't knock throw, that out. Don't throw anything out. Do not throw out your back, Chris. Just. Oh, yeah. She's a. She's a. She's heavy. She stands up all by herself. Yeah. Holy crap! What did we do?